Bear, how are you, you Bear? Yeah, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. It's hard to get you in this shot. It's a, it's a small little it's booth familiar. we've got here. Yeah, that's um. <laughs> oh, there we go. So, you know, I wanted to bring you to Burger Bar, first of all, because um, this is one of the restaurants that actually made it into the book, Eating Las Vegas. That's right, that's right. First, how do you feel about being included in Eating Las Vegas? Oh, I'm totally excited. Of course I'm totally excited. And I'm even more excited that actually Burger Bar is included too, right? Because it's like uh, the idea is kind of a very casual place and where basically we're doing burgers. But I'm so thrilled that actually I'm part of it with uh, the great, great restaurant in, in Las Vegas. Absolutely. Yeah. No. Um, okay, so, you know, I love this story because you didn't come to Las Vegas to open a hamburger joint. No, I did not. It's true. The whole idea in the beginning was uh, when the deal was signed that I will be opening Fleur de Lis, right, right on, on the end Manali Bay. So that was the deal. Then the restaurant was under construction and we got delayed a little bit, but I had already my chef managers that I have brought in into, uh, into Las Vegas here. And then here at the location in Manali Place, that area, the whole shopping mall, the passage, was supposed to open and there was a location where there was supposed to be a restaurant and I don't know exactly what happened but at that time Bill Richardson, which was the owner and the gentleman who actually built the uh, Manali Bay, right, asked me if I would put a concept in here just to, since I have my staff, my employees here and the restaurant was a bit delayed, to basically fill up that space that the day they're opening up Manali Place is not an empty restaurant. And that's how the whole thing actually happened. And the whole idea was, Bill Richardson really mentioned that after three months when Floris is ready, he either would run it himself, manually they would run it, or they find another tenant. I will not stop with it, just to helping out. And that's how really it started. And when I came here, to see Really, and I agreed. I agreed to help him out. And when I when I saw where actually the place was and the work that needed to be put in and everything that needed, creating a new concept here, I remember so well that I asked Bill uh, Richardson if I eventually could keep the place later on. And I think at that time was when the, when the convention center was being built. And I think Bill uh, Richardson had really much more other things on the plate that actually were in a little spot like here. So we did it very fast. And basically, I, he gave me the burger bar location and that was the story and then we started off and I must say it's again like each time I change a concept take a curve right there's always a risk and we know and at that time I have to say it's about eight years ago now where the burger was not that popular right I think there was only one chef who basically put the name on a burger that was Daniel Boulou in New York he had the DB burger that was the only chef who put his name on a burger felt like when I could see the reaction of it, I said, might as well, let's have a chef, I mean a chef with a chef's name, and let's put a whole concept of burgers together. That's how the whole idea started. Now this has been a tremendous success for you, I mean, and you know, you've got burger bars now around the world, right? I think, yes, I think it has been a tremendous success so far. Again, if three months into the opening, if I would have gone down with it, I would have said that was the silly thing. Today, I think really the burgers, the burger bar really set a trend that, I guess, when you look around just in Vegas. I think every casino now has basically a burger restaurant, which was did not exist in, in the past, right? And I think when we go from coast to coast, I think every chef which has a name in the United States now basically starts a concept with burgers. But the original in the founder, I must say, that was the burger bar with myself. You feel like those guys owe you something? Do you mind that they all copy? No, not at all. I take it as a compliment. Okay. <laughs> um, now you've got a lot of burgers, and hopefully they're going to bring one over, and we can show some people some of this great stuff. But and you talk, talk a bit actually about your signature burger, the Rossini, because that is a crazy burger. What's it, 60 bucks or something? Yes, it's a $60 burger, and I must say, the $60 burger made a wrong right? But I think it was a burger that I didn't have to think, let's say, we had to create a burger in a sense of going too wild, too out there. What I really did to be on a safe place, I really based it again on a classical French dish, right? Because usually, even when we're talking burgers, the Rossini is actually a dish that Escoffier 200 years ago put together and what it was, it was actually a toast, a filet mignon, a slice of foie gras, perigot truffles and Madeira sauce and that combination for 200 years stayed a classic. So my only idea here that I took is in replacing the 
filet mignon with a burger, but the combination of beef, the bread, the truffle, the foie gras is such a great combination that today the Rossini burger is becoming a classic. And that is, explain it to people exactly what it is. Okay, so the, the, the Rossini burger is then the bun, and then we're having a Kobe, Kobe burger on it, so the, the beef is right there. Then we have a slice of uh, sauteed fresh foie gras, we have the Perigord truffle sliced and sauteed on top, and then we put a Madeira sauce, I put the lid on, and here's our Rossini burger. Okay, um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit, you've got, you've got some things coming up here in town that I wanted to chat with you a bit. You've got um, Vegas on Cork. Big food festival, Great. and yeah, that is coming up in uh, April, May. I've got the date here somewhere. I'll remind people. But tell me about Vegas Uncorked and why you like to be involved in that. I think uh, Vegas Uncorked is, is again a pretty amazing event in a sense of we we are in Las Vegas. The event is in Las Vegas, of course. And I think with all the events that I'm doing across the country, I think that's, that's one of the events that really every single chef is showing up. I mean, every chef who has a name, right, is really here. So among the peers, it's really the event and of course as guests when you do come to Uncork I think you really get to meet everybody and when I say everybody it's not only the chef from the United States I think the chef from France are coming over the chef from different countries it really becomes an international chef's event okay, and that is May 5th through 8th by the way so you're going right. to be here and you're also you know I mean we usually have to share you with San Francisco quite a bit and we still do here in Vegas but you're going to be shooting your new PBS season out here in Las Vegas right? Absolutely we should actually start starting this coming Saturday. We're starting actually, uh, I have my own set built, which is really interesting. It got built in uh, Chicago, and it's uh, Woodmore who built it, and uh, PBS in Las Vegas was really kind enough to literally giving us a studio where the set is mounted and we'll be shooting uh, straight from Las Vegas and it's very exciting, the set looks beautiful. Is this the first time you're shooting it in Vegas? Yes, I mean I shoot the first uh, two, that's the third season we're entering, so each time 26 shows, but the two first seasons what we did, we did the restaurants, like the burger bar, like Fleur de Lis, so we did, we did shot in Las Vegas. But usually when it comes to the whole part of the, the show, that was shot actually in Mendocino in one country. And this time it's actually shot right here. Okay, and what can people expect? This Just your same basic great cooking tips as usual? Yeah, I, I think it's, when we say as usual, yeah, the show is called The Secret of a Chef. I think there's so many shows out there where there's so much things happening. I think that there are actually not very many shows that really Really, a chef is actually literally cooking, sharing trips, trips. I mean, sharing tips and a lot of secrets, right? And I think that's why I think that show became so successful that we are on the third season because I'm literally sharing uh, with every single viewer little tricks, little things that I'm using and I'm sharing with my chefs. So it's very, it's very educative also. Okay, great. We're gonna wait on a little food and check out in the kitchen over there. You see the window. They look like they're getting some stuff ready for us. We'll be back in one second as soon as they bring us some food over here, okay? You better, thanks. Now, now here we are, you bear. The food has finally arrived. I gotta show people what we're looking at here. All right. This is just um, just absolutely amazing here. This, this is typical of what you do at Burger Bar. Incredible burgers. What kind of burgers do you offer here? So burgers, we are literally offering three kinds of beef. So anywhere from uh, Kobe beef, Black Angus, and then uh, grass-fed beef. But we're also offering a tuna burger, veggie burger, chicken burger, lamb burger. I mean, you mean it. Vegan burger, veggie burger. So you really have a choice and an option. And then what comes with it, the whole idea at Burger Bar is, and the uniqueness of Burger Bar is, you build your own burger. So therefore, we have about 40 toppings that you really can choose from. You choose the bun from the bakery, the one that you would like, but I'm on some really cool uh, toppings. Yeah, let's, look, let's take a look. What do we got here? You can have some uh, asparagus tips over here. You can have some uh, jalapeno bacon over here. You have some uh, seared sauteed foie gras right oh, over that here. foie gras looks good, man. That foie gras looks really delicious, really. <laughs> and then we have some great caramelized onions. We have some sprouts. We have some avocados. We have different kind of sauces here, where we have our aioli right over here. We have the barbecued aioli. Here we have a tartar sauce. That's 
that's our basil sauce right over here, and that's the honey mustard, and all the sauces are homemade, and you really have a lot of choices. For example, here, we even have some uh, jalapeno pickles, so you can basically keep in one of the sauces, and, and that is great and unique. You really did reinvent the burger, plus, you since you opened, you've reinvented the milkshake, too. We don't have one here, but you put in a little booze in your milkshake now, and right? That's totally right. So, the whole idea about the milkshake station at Burger Bar is based on the same concept. You build your own milkshake, so we have a couple of signatures one, but then you literally can build your own milkshake, and then we, you are right, we have the milkshake for the adults, so we really actually liquoring up the milkshakes, and okay. lots of fun. Great. Well, again, that's what made this, um, first of all, the originator that everybody's ripping off around the world, the first gourmet burger place ever, and um, that's what made it one of the 50 essential restaurants here in Eating Las Vegas. And we love the guide. <laughs> Whoa, I almost dropped it. You love the guidebook, you got right? On that one. <laughs> we, we can actually buy that here. Yes, you can actually buy it here, and you can even buy it at the Burger Bar. And really, it's per the perfect guide for everyone who comes to Las Vegas to have really an overview of all the restaurants and what's happening in Las Vegas. Great, thank you so much, Hubert. You're welcome.